What's up, everybody? I want to tell you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's one of the easiest ways to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting Anchor on Anchor, you can distribute distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download Anchor, the app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. And you know, I'm a veteran, so let's hear some more military cadences. What's up, family? So, I believe in God. I am I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ, died on the cross to save a wretch like me. I definitely do believe in that. But, religion. I pick Christianity because it's closest to what I believe. But, I am lately finding the churches to be very problematic. I've seen several stories about how the church has not been there for people, you know, people going, I know when I was younger, the church was more of the community, you know, when my grandma was sick, they'd come take care of her, make sure, you know, they'd even pick my grandma up for church because she didn't drive. And I know that lately that has not happened. Um, you know, I've seen people say that, like, their mother was in the church for 30 years and the church didn't even call to check on her. And when the mother passed away, the church told her that she couldn't even have her funeral there after she paid tithes to that church and, you know, helped with the church. And it's like the person in the video said, what is the purpose for church? Is it for community? Is it for show? Like, what is it? And I have to ask that question, you know, in a, in a society where we have so many churches, but yet the same amount of crime, you know, you got to ask yourself, like, yes, church is accessible. No church is not going to fix every issue or problem, but the churches are definitely wanting a lot from people. Um, but then when the people actually need them, I don't see a lot of the churches showing up the way that all the time that you spend in the church. Now, I do believe that your relationship should solely be with God. That's what I believe. But a lot of people have very strong relationships with their church and their church, whatever their church says and goes, it's the way of their life. So I am going to share some stories today on people talking about deconstructing Christianity and their religion. So let's get started. Y'all need to see this. Why isn't there a motivation in church spaces to create emotionally healthy Christians? It's because you can't control what's healthy. If you try, if you want to control on, you man. a culture that is controlling, you can't create healthy people because healthy people are not going to bend to your will every time you tell them to do something. I've got to wound you and handicap you and make you walk with a limp so you can use me as a cane. And so you got to use kind of you got to use discernment folks in the people that you listen to spiritually very true you know i say this a lot the church doesn't focus on mental health a lot and a lot of people go to church for mental health issues and have mental health issues you know it's a big problem let's keep going been with my husband for 10 years when i found out that he was having an affair my in-laws lived about 10 minutes away from us and the night i confronted my husband about the affair um it was at the church my father-in-law was there because he is the pastor so he saw me crying and 
all of that stuff. I did not hear from my in-laws for two weeks after the confrontation at church, and that was when my mother-in-law asked me if I wanted tamales. After that, I found out from someone at church that they wanted me to move out of the home that they had rented to my husband and I, knowing that he had stopped paying the bills and I could not afford anything at that moment. During that time, my husband was sleeping at his parents' house or his boyfriend's house. When I was finally able to get on my feet and move out a couple months later, um, they did not respond to me letting them know. They didn't ask where I was going, if I needed any help or anything like that. I tried to keep in some sort of touch with my mother-in-law, but um, she, you know... I guess didn't really want to because I have not heard from her or my father-in-law since then. The word abandoned may seem like a strong word, but I use it because they didn't do anything to show care to me during this time of grieving. My mother-in-law bought me um, some groceries during quarantine but nobody ever asked how I was doing. No one sat with me, no one prayed with me. My expectation was not that, you know, they were gonna be like my own parents. My expectation was that they would just care a little bit, especially because I had known them for so long, that they would have some sort of empathy and be like, I'm so sorry my son did this to you, especially as Christians. So that's why I use the word abandoned. They literally left me in a very vulnerable time of need. So she's discussing how she went to her husband's church and the parents and the husband, I guess, was having an affair with the man and pretty much they just said sayonara and did not support her. And I, I've seen that a lot where people get divorced in the church and it's really not a, it's kind of like the pastors will pray to keep their marriage together. But once those, once those marriages dissolve, you don't really see the aftercare of those same people. It's like the care factor in the church is kind of going by the wayside. But let's keep going. People, I'm talking. Hey, 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 don't, don't, don't you lay your head back. I, I'm, I'm important. I'm somebody. Now, you might do your English teacher that way. But I'm not teaching English. I'm teaching eternal life here. I love you. You know I love you. Have I convinced you I love you? Uh, yeah. You better say, you better nod your head yes. All right. Come on. Put it up there. All right. You stay awake and you listen to me. You say, well, he may never come back. Well, he ain't here now. And where have you been, Mr. Underwood? And I noticed on the calendar I'm supposed to marry y'all. What makes you think I'd marry you? You're one of the sorriest church members I have. You're not worth 15 cents. And you want me to marry you to her? And you want to marry him? And he don't even know where he belongs? And you don't even know where you belong? Now, uh, let me tell y'all everybody here how much I love these kids. Do you know I love you, sir? Stand up, big boy. Do you know I love you? All right. All right, give me a little love. I'm a real deal. Yeah. All right. I know you are too, but you ain't been here. You can't get this in any other church in town. Y'all don't want me. All you got to do is tell me we won't have a church fight because I'll get my little Connie and we'll get in her little Buick Enclave. It's paid for. And... We'll sell what we need to sell, and we'll go on down the road, and we'll find some little podunk church that don't know up from down, and I'll find me a dozen Joe's baskets who don't have a pot or a window and who'll shout Jesus, and I'll give the rest of my life to them. So he was reading that church for Phil. Um, I don't know. I mean... He really kind of, I mean, he um, he almost had me until he said he'd go down the street and find some other people that don't know up from down. So it's like, are you just pretty much saying that people are suckers and they need to come and bow down to you because you're a preacher? I, I can get behind him saying like, pay attention, don't fall asleep in church. 
a lot of people do go to church for the perks of being married or being able to use the church's services. There is that side too. But yeah, he kind of lost me when he said the other part. But you do have people that do use the church. I do agree with that as well. Let's keep going. I promise I'm not a pervert. This app will not stop showing me half-naked women. It was testing me. Little does he know that TikTok runs off of an algorithm. So I have some tea on this pastor. And when I say tea, I really mean fucking tea. So this pastor has personal connections with my dad. And with everybody, like that knows my dad and that my dad knows and i tried to have a few conversations with this pastor um because of his racist um different type of bigoted hateful ideologies i have receipts i have screenshots i have voice recordings of the kind of manipulation that this person perpetrates and I saw him come up on my TikTok and I was like, this is a fucking golden moment because men like this who are prideful and who are in positions of power will always fall very hard because they don't want any accountability from anybody. But now that I'm seeing him posting on TikTok, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. <laughs> He blocked me on Instagram, of course, because I would speak out against some of the hateful things that he would say. I would respond to him in his comments, and then he would DM me. Everything about the conversations that I've had with him were emotionally and spiritually very manipulative. And I am going to post them on TikTok. So this is a part one. I also get a lot of shit from my own family um, about talking out against him um, because my family is still very deeply rooted in religious trauma and the cycles of religious spiritual abuse so so that was funny and i have heard pastors say that too like oh i had to get off social media because i was seeing a lot of naked women but it is an algorithm if you are watching certain things for a certain amount of time or even liking those things, guess what? It's going to keep showing you that. It's just going to keep showing you that. That's how the algorithm works. So all those pastors that like to preach about, oh, the social media was showing me this. It's because you're watching it. So let's keep going. Watch this full video. Let's start here. Why do we perpetuate male dominance and call it God's will god goes to instruct adam and eve to be fruitful multiply cultivate the ground rule over everything you know how many gendered instructions he gives them zero he says you both y'all them you rule together there's no hierarchy between them hierarchy enters a world actually as a result of sin after the fall and god calls it a curse Genesis 3, 16, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. This interpretation is likely the opposite of everything you grew up hearing or are still hearing. Similarly, I recently made this video in response to a pastor who used Genesis to say that humans were created to work. From a theological perspective, hard manual labor, having to work to eat, was a punishment for Adam's disobedience, not what he was created to do. Genesis 3, 17 says, because you disobeyed, cursed is the ground because of you, and in toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Genesis 3, 19 goes on to say, by the sweat of your face, you will eat bread until you return to the ground. I have to reiterate this point. The Bible is an interpretative text that shares opposing views on a lot of different subjects. And how you interpret the Bible says a lot more about you, your socialization, your culture, your beliefs than it does about the actual text. I was in church for most of my life, practically lived at church for most of my life, and I've never heard these texts preached in this way. And that demonstrates to me that the culture I was raised in concerning their beliefs about work and women was oppressive. No one gets to excuse oppressive theology by saying the Bible plainly states. Because when one does that, all they're doing is showing me who they are i can follow for more content you know that is a very like that is very true and I, I even i didn't realize that that you know when the curse happened he said that your husband will rule over you but god was referring to them as ruling together be prior to that food for thought you know i definitely believe that like the church is riddled in patriarchy you know the man this and this and that but we all we have forgotten that it was all due to the curse so yeah that was some good stuff 
Let's keep going. We don't even realize it's a scam anymore. The end of days. I swear every single time I start talking about spiritual freedom through deconstruction, here comes some happily church person telling me that this is a sign that Jesus is coming back and we are living in the last and evil days. Let me tell y'all something. Christians have been predicting the end of days since before Christianity was actually a religion. The apostle Paul told his followers, don't even get married because Jesus is about to come back any day now. So you mean to tell me that Jesus overlooked the persecution of the early church, the Christian Crusades, the transatlantic slave trade, chattel slavery, Jim Crow, apartheid, the Holocaust, World War I, World War II, redlining, prison industrial complex, lynching, all to come back because people are now deconstructing and decolonizing the theology that people used to enslave us in the first place. Indoctrination is a hell of a drug. Mm. Yeah, let's keep going. But they are. White evangelical Christians are Christians, as Putin is a Christian. Because see, what we're not going to do is reduce Christianity to only the people that don't cause harm, because then we're going to be left with about six or seven people. Historically, too. Because in the last 1,700 years, Christianity has been used as a weapon of oppression against marginalized identities. Because Christians invented the term malicide in order to be able to justify the, the murder and the genocide of hundreds of thousands of people because they were ending evil. You can Google this. Because see, any Jewish person, any uh, Muslim person, any LGBTQ person, any indigenous person can tell you and can show you the scars of Christianity. Not just their personal scars, but also our generational scars. We have them. We're bearing them. And when you look at us and say, well, they weren't real Christians, we're feeling rather gaslit because it was Christian theology what caused them to do the things that they've done. So what are we going to do? Are we going to care more about the reputation of Christianity or about people? Because, see, if you are more concerned about all of us only seeing Christianity through the good lens and the good things that Christians have done, then you are telling me that I am a liar because Christianity has caused me harm and my ancestors harm. But were they not real Christians? Were the papal bulls of the 15th century that started colonization to the Americas or America, really? Uh, were they not written by real Christians? Where all of the Protestants that moved to North America and that wanted to take the land and called indigenous people savages, not real Christians, where the Europeans that went to Africa to enslave Africans in order to save them, not real Christians. So I guess all of us are just wrong about holding them accountable for their Christianity and how their toxic theology has actually informed their behavior, right? Because that's the only option, that we are wrong for holding their Christian theology accountable. I am not going to protect the reputation of Christianity over the humanity of people. White evangelical Christians are Christians. Putin is a Christian. People that cause harm because of their theology are Christians. I can name you all of the theologies that cause so much harm to people. Original sin is harmful, is abusive, is psychological abuse, and leads to physical abuse. Purity culture, the theology of suffering, I mean, we can talk about these things forever, but you're going to say, no, they aren't real Christians. Come on now. Are we more concerned with the reputation of Christianity than the well-being of people? Because if you are, you're one of those Christians too. She hit the nail on the head. Which one are they more concerned with? Let's keep going. Craziest thing you've ever seen with your own eyes happen in church. I'm the son of a pastor. My dad and one of his friends used to pastor a church together. This particular Sunday, for whatever reason, they had some, like, I don't know, animosity with each other. Now, I'm the praise and worship leader. I'm sitting up playing, blah, 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 blah. You know, just going through worship, you know. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. All that. I look up. I don't see my dad and Mr. Jesse or whatever. No biggie. Keep going. I turn around. They walking back in the sanctuary. Bloody than a bitch. I'm talking blood on their shirt, blood all over their clothes, real pants the whole night. They had gone outside and ran a fairway, really gave each other the fade during praise and worship. I'm talking, meek, 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 mookie, meek, meek. And then my daddy got up and preached about forgiveness. <laughs> that is funny. Let's keep going. 
recent videos, I was discussing that, like, the reasons black people deconstruct are vastly different than the reasons white people deconstruct. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of what those reasons are. One of the biggest reasons I would say is the contradiction between biblical teachings and Christian systems that have contributed towards black oppression. At the helm of every major black oppressive movement, Christianity started. When you consider this, it's enough to make a black person want to leave Christianity altogether. Another one is many of us don't see ourselves within scripture. Many of us don't see ourselves depicted within Christian art. Even if these saints had darker complexion or different ethnicities, they're still depicted as white. So there's this thing of our identity has been stripped from history. So why would somebody want to continue to participate in something like that, knowing that that's how people feel about us? Issues with identity, and you take issues with how Christianity has contributed to black oppression. We desire disruption not assimilation. The silence of God and the church when it comes to our suffering and the loss of friends and family in the community, being silent on the ongoing threats of police brutality, being silent on mental health crises, the black church's silence on queer identity, right? Um, not even willing to unpack that and see, and, and see that maybe we have gotten it wrong. Women in leadership, the misogynistic nature of black church, the lack of identity affirming work. This is some of the things that have caused black people to want to leave the church. It's not so much as a person leaving the faith. A lot of times it's a person expanding the faith. It's a lot of times it's people who are trying to figure this thing out because the black church has failed them. There are a ton more reasons, and I might do several parts of this to break down other reasons, but these are the three that I wanted to really, really focus on. You guys let me know what you think. I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Save this video and follow for more content. Much love to y'all. So I definitely believe in that. It's not so much leaving the faith, it's expanding your faith, expanding it out of the walls, as you should do for anything. When you grow up and your parents teach you something, you know, that could be possibly wrong. You grow, you travel, you learn, you know, education is key. And that's what this is really all about. Because for me, I will always believe in God, you know, and I do believe that God is bigger than the Bible. He's bigger than the church. Like God is everything. God is in us. So, you know, if your mind is that small when it comes to God, because I do believe that religion makes God smaller than what he is. And so you know, the, just go to the ocean, just go anywhere and see everything that has created and know that, that, you know, that is nothing that is man-made. And yeah, like, I like what he said, like, it's not leaving the faith, it's expanding. Let's play one more video. You need to find a gay church. When I came out in whatever capacity that was, all my friends were like, oh, you need to find a gay church. Why do I need to find a gay church? I found a gay church and they were doing the same shit that my charismatic black ass church was doing. Toxic. It was the same building of empire. We need to break this down and get back to the basics, which is love. God is love. That is God's first commandment. That is what God constantly preaches. And this is my thing on everything in life. God created us all. Black, white, brown, red, purple, green, whatever. God created us all. So how can you hate one another? Really? How can you say you're better than one another and then say you believe in God? That's the part that gets me. When people think God is not a respecter of persons. That's one thing I will leave you with. God is not a respect of persons. He doesn't love you more or me more because of the color of my skin. He created me. He created us. You know, so yeah, expand your faith. That's what I'll leave you with. You guys be safe out there. Stay blessed. I'll be praying for you. F's for family is out.